London's Westbury Hotel, Trinidad and Tobago's High Commissioner welcomed guests to the country's first overseas trade boost of local delicacies at an official tasting party. The temptingly displayed products are an indication of Trinidad's food potential and could help in the search for new markets. Lady Constantine had a hectic evening demonstrating the high quality of the products and coping with inquiries. The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago displayed a very keen interest in this project from its inception. Dr. Williams led the way by tasting some of the exhibits. Of no lesser interest was the sampling of local rums, and the party was rounded off by local compositions and our own authentic steel band. McGill University in Montreal has turned out many fine graduates from its West Indian students. Here a student has a tutorial with his lecturer in economics. But one of the highlights, especially for Trinidad students, was the first formal visit to Montreal of Trinidad and Tobago's High Commissioner and Mrs. Rose to meet students. In his speech to students from the universities of McGill and Sir George Williams and other centers of learning, the High Commissioner impressed upon them the opportunities for employment that await them at home after graduation. Mr. Rose ended his speech by reminding the students of our country's motto, Together we aspire, together we achieve. After his talk with the Trade Commissioner in Montreal, students had the opportunity of talking informally with the High Commissioner and his wife. On the more informal side, there was dancing, and lots to eat and the meeting of old friends. The usual Trinidadian atmosphere was heightened by good steel band music. At Piaco Airport, the Federal German Economic Mission arrived for talks and the presentation of a Klinomobil, an independence gift from the Federal Republic of Germany. Later, the Minister of Health officially welcomed the mission. And the leader of the mission replied. The Clinomobile is a welcome addition to the health services in the country areas. And Dr. Eric Williams expressed the country's gratitude to the Federal Republic. The Federal German Economic Mission coped with a packed schedule of discussions and on-the-spot inspections of the country's productive effort, with specific interest in major industries. One such plant was Trinidad Cement Limited, situated at Claxton Bay. Federation Chemical Limited's plant at Point of Pier was another industrial site visited by the German mission. The German mission also went to Tobago and held talks with the Tobago Chamber of Commerce. They inspected the scene of the landslide on the North Coast Road. Despite pressing engagements, the mission members were able to find time for other activities. 
Another important mission came from Venezuela, led by their Minister of Finance. They came for trade discussions between Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago. Of prime importance in the discussions was the 30% tariff levied on Trinidad goods entering Venezuelan markets. This was the second time in three years the talks were held between Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela. At a COCO conference held at Hilton Hotel, the Prime Minister welcomed about a hundred delegates from 20 countries. The conference, under the sponsorship of the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, aimed at stabilizing the price of cocoa. This was the first international conference held in Trinidad since its independence. The delegates acknowledged the immense contribution by Trinidad and Tobago to cocoa research. The representative of the Food and Agricultural Organization study group was elected secretary, with Trinidad's James O'Neill Lewis, chairman of the conference. The Prime Minister opened the National Economic Advisory Council's inaugural meeting. This council, composed of representatives of business, labor and farmers' organizations, advises government on all matters affecting the country's economic development. Visiting Jamaica for the first time in six years, Dr. Eric Williams arrives to preside over the first meeting of the Council of the University of the West Indies since his appointment as Pro-Chancellor. Dr. Williams took the opportunity to meet the Jamaican Prime Minister. Highlight of Dr. Williams' visit was his address at the graduation ceremony. He created history in being the first Prime Minister to visit Jamaica since her independence and in his speech reminded graduates of their responsibilities and called for a crusade for the spread of reading and understanding among all citizens. Dr. Williams chatted with students and obtained at first hand some knowledge of their problems. On a visit to Israel, our Prime Minister and Mr. David Ben-Gurion, the Israeli Prime Minister, discussed technical aid from Israel for Trinidad and Tobago. During a crowded five-day tour, Dr. Williams visited the Jewish Center for Martyrs and Heroes. He was invited to perform a candle lighting ceremony in memory of six million Jews who died in Nazi concentration camps. The Trinidad request for aid included material assistance and the services of experts and cooperation in the various fields of industrial and social development and training. The Trinidad delegation was impressed by the arresting architecture and beauty of modern Jerusalem. Trinidad's 100th pioneer industry, Sampton Metal Caribbean Limited, is a milestone on this country's road to prosperity. Sited at Omira, Sampton's is a producer of metal goods. Another important addition to the Pioneer Industries is the Issa Nicholas paper bag factory. Situated at Barataria, this factory, like others, helps to strengthen our economic structure and provides much needed employment.
in the John Donaldson Institute, students at the catering school learn different skills for jobs in the catering trade. Applicants not less than 15 years are accepted for tuition on an examination and selection basis. Government's public relations officer makes an the appeal. The Prime Minister's hurricane relief fund for Tobago is mounting, but much more needs to be done in view of the scale of devastation in Tobago. This map has been prepared to show the damage to agriculture in terms of percentages. In these three areas, damage to agriculture was 25% and under. In these four areas, the damage to agriculture was from 26 to 50%. Then in these areas, damage was from 51 to 75 percent. Now these black areas show the places where damage was from 76 percent to 100 percent. And the same applies to this white area which is a forest reserve or was the forest reserve so important to the water supply. You see how urgent it is to contribute quickly and liberally to the Prime Minister's Tobago Hurricane Relief Fund. Thank you.